What's the difference between a pointing MIMO 317 and a pointing MIMO 4? Again, specifically looking at the 17. Ah, keep it simple. That's really so important, specifically today, as I just want to walk through this. So last week I presented this setup here, which is an, an antenna, an Omni antenna, connected in one kit that I'm still working with to the Teltonica RUTX50. It's a simple kit. It basically is an antenna with all the outputs of this antenna unit being able to connect direct to the Teltonica RUTX50 or a typical 5G router, but I am talking about kits that are available on the RF Shop website. Now, you may see I stand quite a little bit sideways because this area, there you go, that's the data sheets for the MIMO 317, and this is the data sheet for the MIMO 417. I'm just going to do a side-by-side -side comparison, but the thing is, I don't want to go into nerd mode. I don't want to go too technical. I want to explain this to you for a user so that you can make a simple and informed decision about which one will work best for you on the kits you could buy at RF Shop combined with the RUTX50 or if you want to have some of the other Teltonica models we can offer you the RUTX12 with two modems or your RUTX14 which is basically a, a faster 4G uh, modem than the other models bearing in mind that the X50 is actually 5G and it is faster on the 4G specs as well so I would go for RUTX12 or RTX 50 on our kits. Now, so between the MIMO, MIMO 4 and the MIMO 3, what's the difference and what's common? So I'm going to start with what is common between the two. So the first thing is um, the compact antennas that can be placed on um, moving vehicles, basically. That's, that's the main device solution. Um, and moving vehicles because it gets used in trucks and buses and caravans and also marine applications on boats and um, just as yachts and, and even high-end yachts as well. Um, so that's what's there in common. Also, it's an omni antenna, meaning if you put this on a vehicle, it can see something in all directions that is very powerful. It means that you can set and forget. You can go moving away. Also, a thing that is quite important to note between the two that's actually similar is the fact that they come with two meter cables completely com combined in one single harness. Um, that means that your installation can be quite simple. It's an antenna and it's a modem, nothing else that you need to worry about. Um, to, unless you need more than two meters, then you would come to rfshop.com.au where we can give you an extension cable or if you need it shorter, we are also happy to help to make the cable shorter to just have this short tail from the modem to your antenna. Well, actually, I mean for your antenna to a modem. What also is common, it basically has the same high level feature. So if you look at the specs itself, you'll see it has 4x4 four four MIMO. So it has four antennas for your 5G router. Gives you the best type of connection to the X50 or the other modems as well. So you have four antennas you can use. And the four antennas are completely um, compatible with the full Australian cellular spectrum. Now, there is a difference there, and you will see on the data sheet, the MIMO 3 can go lower. So that's not something that's supported in the MIMO 4. May not be relevant for you. Um, so in Australia, it doesn't mean anything. And in cellular bands, specifically thinking cellular, and, and like cellular, I mean 4G, 5G, doesn't matter so much either here in Australia. Um, Wi-Fi, also actually pretty similar because this, can, this one can do up to Wi-Fi 6E. If you don't know what Wi-Fi 6E is yet, it's the future spec that is still coming. So it is ready for the future of 5G. It is ready for the future of 4G. This I'm pointing at the MIMO 3, but it's the same for the MIMO 4. It's ready for Wi-Fi 6E. It's ready for the future versions of 5G and of the Wi-Fi bands. So, and it also has GPS. Both antennas have GPS. So there's so much in common. They're both waterproof, so you can use both in pretty hostile environments. Um, there is a video that Pointing made that they slammed this with a hammer. So this one probably would go through the same um, experience at some point as well. The MIMO 4 is very rugged IP69. The MIMO 3 is IP69. Wow, so you see it's much of a muchness. There's a lot of, lot of um, stuff that is in common between the two. Um, the further detail comes into the actual performance of the antenna and there is a reason for that. So the question I have is, is one new and the old one old? Or is it just the first unit and the second unit? And I'd say you could just rather say this is the first unit and the second unit, something that's a bit more compact, more closely resembles 
the puck in tenor. So it's a smaller form factor and that is great. A lot of people prefer to have smaller form factors. And that is why this is really useful in tenor, the MIMO 4. It is more compact, it can be used in a various in various locations where the MIMO 3 may be too big, too clunky, too high or something like that. So think mechanical, think practical. Then there's a lot to say for the MIMO 417 or the MIMO 415 or 19 or whichever one it is. The other thing that I forgot to mention, both can be in black and white. So you have black versions, white versions, you have black versions, white versions. So no difference there either. Um, the MIMO 4 does come with a few extra mounting options. So specifically, if you have the example here, it's mounted to a pole. So that's a bracket that's available and it kind of doesn't look completely out of out of whack on the um, this round shape it would look a little bit um, dorky I guess on the um, this shape here so this one is just designed that it looks quite um, no, sensible on a caravan or a boat or some vessel this one can be placed on a pole on a mast something either horizontal or vertical would make sense all right so there we go it's all like much of a muchness there's not and there is a reason why I prefer performance wise in Australia the MIMO 3. It is the gain in the low end. Now if you look closely at the data sheets and there's the two data sheets available on the screen and I'm just going to put one MIMO 3 and the MIMO 4. The number is higher for the MIMO 3. So if you go really rural, if you go far offshore and you say well this I need a compact antenna and I want to go far away from the nearest base stations, MIMO 3 is going to be a little bit better for you to still have a connection. The MIMO 4 may not get you connected that far away if you are really using the low frequency bands. That's key for when you are traveling around. So there's a big difference there. And it's important to know that this one is more convenient. This one, I mean the MIMO 4, can be used in very compact places, can be used in metro areas like here, the demo I'm doing here and all the tests I'm going to do in this um, suburbia. This would be an absolute beast of an antenna, absolutely perfect. If you go to caravan parks where there's always some connectivity, just not um, working for you and your setup, this would be a beautiful solution. If you're going out bush, going more remote, if you're going out um, on a boat, for instance, and you go a bit further away, but you want an antenna that's just on the, um, on the roof of a vessel, I would go for the MIMO 3. So we're going to have both antennas available in our uh, 5G kits on our website because both have their very valid space. The other thing to look at is gaining the high frequency band. So think about 5G specifically, and then it's kind of a to and fro because like I mentioned, gaining the low band when you really want to go remote, the MIMO 3 and the MIMO 370 in this instance would be better. If you want to look at better gain in the high band, 5G and, and the higher frequencies um, for 4G, so in, in the metro areas, the MIMO 4 is better. So you don't have a one size fits all and you don't have a one is better than the other one. If you want to go remote, the gain on this antenna is better than MIMO 3. If you want to stay in the metro areas and want to use it where there is some signal available, the MIMO 4 is going to give you better performance in terms of the gain that's quoted on the data sheets. The last topic that is quite important for me as an antenna engineer is just to look at the radiation patterns and it is something to be mindful of also when you are um, thinking about okay I want to have an antenna that's higher I put it on a mast or so. Interesting enough the actual antenna it's mounted like this I have seen people who mount an antenna that like this and they put it on their sides and you will actually see the antenna doesn't do great in that direction it's, it's actually pointing towards the side so if I stand behind it like this it is designed such that it goes to the sides. However, it's not to the horizon. And look at the data sheet specifically. You see it's always squinting up a little bit. So it is not actually a peak on the horizon. It goes up a little bit. Um, and that is where I do favor the MIMO 3 a little bit because the pattern, because the antenna has a different design, the shape is different. So the antennas have a better way to just go towards the sides, um, not as extreme to the uh, top but the um, MIMO 4 has a bit more of a tendency to go up which is fine that that kind of is um, quite common in, in antennas like this but it is certainly something to be mindful of when I when we at RF shop speak to customers and specifically try to figure out what are their needs we look quite closely we listen quite closely to what exactly is the setup that they're looking for and if they need an antenna that is actually best on the horizons then the MIMO 3 would be the better choice. If it is something, maybe even on a boat for instance, where the boat is actually rocking left and right, that um, the fact that this antenna has a bit of a squint up might be beneficial. Um, when you have an antenna that goes up on a pole, if somebody says, well, I have a caravan, I'm going to put this antenna up high six, seven meters into the sky in a, in, in a, um, uh, on a caravan setup, I would probably use the MIMO 3.
No, there's always some decisions to be made. Um, I hope this doesn't make it any more confusing. There's definitely differences between them, and it's not that this is the old one, this is the new one. Both have their place, and it's actually awesome that we have a solution now that is um, much better gain in the metro areas. And there's also the awesome option to use various of the MIMO 3 antennas in the more remote places, either in outback or in the, um, on the water. Doesn't matter. That's it. I hope it makes sense. Thanks for watching. See you again on the next video. Cheers. Bye-bye.